Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the Pulse chart. Now, the Pulse chart is really an extended or an enhanced way of doing a line chart. It's great at showing trends in your data and not only showing trends, but allowing you to make it more engaging with a playback feature. So there's actually a capability if you bring in a timestamp field into one of the, the field lists, you can have the ability to animate your line chart over time. And you can even have pauses or disruptions in that animation when there's certain events that occur. And so the example that I'm going to show you here in a little bit is we're going to look at the U.S. stock market, specifically the S&P 500, and look at what kind of economic events might have occurred that could cause increases or decreases in the stock index. So that we're going to look at some things like that and see how we can actually see those trends in the data unfold right before our eyes as we use the animation features that are made available to us. There's also some nice features that are built in whenever you have gaps in your data. So say, for example, we don't have any stock price changes over the weekend, and we don't want to necessarily show those gaps. By default, it'll actually close those gaps. But if you want to see those gaps, you can also turn on a feature that allows you to see gaps when they occur. So there's a lot of nice little subtle, subtle features that are built into the Pulse chart. Let's go ahead and take a look. And by the way, I would say the screenshot that I have here uh, that actually came from the Microsoft sample. The Microsoft sample in this case does not really do it justice. It's a great chart. I think the example I've come up with will hopefully do it a little bit better justice of what's possible with it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go over to the Power BI desktop and walk you through how you can use the Pulse chart. All right, so as usual, we're going to start by going to pull in some data that we're going to be using for this example. I already told you what type of data we're going to be using. It's going to be the S&P 500 data for the U.S. stock market over the last year, a little bit more than a year. So we're going to go up to the Get Data section here and select Excel as our data source. And the one we're going to be using is, yes, it's the U.S. stock market. So I'll go ahead and select U.S. stock market here and hit Open. And once I've selected this, this will go bring me into the navigation pane here where I can select the spreadsheet with inside of that workbook called Daily Log. And if I select that, you can see kind of what the data looks like. I can see here I have an entry for each day. There's some missing days when we've had a weekend, for example. I can see the opening number, the high number, the low number, and what it closed at for the stock market that day. Again, this is the S&P 500, so it's not every stock market value in here. And then I can see a column that has some major events. So not every day has an event, so there's a lot of blanks, but you can see there is tax cuts passed December 20th. If I scroll down a little bit farther, there was uh, actually not listed here, but you can see the French presidential election may have caused some kind of impact. So I threw that in there. I also put the inauguration of President Trump in there. You know, I'm not making any political statement there, but just you can see how these things might have impacted the stock market. And so I've got this data set. Again, we're looking at a preview here, so you don't see all the other events that are in here, but I have data all the way to the beginning of 2017. And I'll hit load to go ahead and bring this into our data model. So it's going to pull this into our data model now. And as it does that, you can see the fields available on the right hand side. And my next step then, of course, is to go ahead and bring in from the Power BI Custom Visual Store. So I'm going to go up to the store section here. I'm going to bring in and pull in the Pulse chart. So I found the custom visual here. I'm going to go ahead and type in Pulse chart, or just Pulse would bring it back as well. And I can see the Pulse chart available here. I'll go ahead and add that into the library or the visual pane that I have on the right hand side. And then I can select that Pulse chart so I can start to use it with inside of the example that we're going to be doing. I'll go ahead and make that a little larger or quite a bit larger actually. And then we'll bring in a few things. You can see we have things like a timestamp, the values field, an event title, event description, event size, runner counter. We got a lot of different fields we can work with here. But what we're going to do is we're going to start by bringing in the date as our timestamp. So you can either just check it off or drag it in. And I accidentally created a hierarchy out of that. So let me go ahead and delete that. There we go. And so I'll drag in the, uh, the date into the timestamp field here. You don't see anything show up yet because we haven't really told it any kind of measure that we want to look at. So the type of measure that I want to look at is what the value of the stock index was at the end of the day. So that would be my close amount. So I'm going to drag the close into the value section here. All right, and so you can see that the chart generated a, a, a view here for us where it's actually showing our, 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 our dates or our months, I should say, going across the middle of the chart. Now, the reason why it did that was because oftentimes you might be dealing with negative numbers. And so you actually have the option to show the, the labels of the months in this case in the middle of the chart or down at the bottom of the chart. So you have some flexibility and you have the ability to change some of that. We'll look at the 
flexibility we have with that in a moment here. Now you can also bring in a type of an event and you have an event title, an event description, and an event size. When you bring in an event, and I'm going to drop this events field into the event description, when you bring in an event, it brings in and adds this little dot that appears over your chart. So you see these little dots. I have one here, one here, and then one way over here. So I have three different events that are going to appear on this chart. And what happens is when I go to actually animate this chart, so if I hit the play button here, you'll see it's a fairly slow looking chart, at least initially here until we make any changes. You can see the first event pops up on January 20th, 2017, President Trump had his inauguration. Then after a few seconds, it'll continue on, continue into my chart until it comes to the next event that I had in my data set. And it'll pause there for a few seconds, a few moments. And then once it goes through that few moments of pause, it'll go ahead and continue on to the next event. And it'll, that's kind of the idea of the pulse here. It's showing events that occurred here. Here's the French presidential election occurred on May 8th, 2017. After a few seconds, it'll continue on. So that's kind of what it's showing here. Now, you have the ability here to actually change the title if I wanted to that appeared on that, that uh, hover over. So if I go back here a step, and let's actually go back to the very beginning, I actually have the ability here to change the way this little box appears. I can change what's shown here. Right now I have the event description showing as the events field that I have. So President Trump inauguration was my description. You can also bring in a field that determines the size of the bubble here. So the size of that dot that appears here, you can control that with inside of your data set. So you could have some kind of separate measure that determines how large that dot appears. So I could do something like maybe bring in the close to the event size, and that'll determine the size of our dots. So you can kind of do that if you wanted to, or if you want them to all be the same size, you can remove that and then manually adjust all of them to be the same size and the format section that we're gonna look at here a few moments. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. I don't want them necessarily to be different sizes, just wanna show you the fact that you can do that. The other thing that you have here is something called the runner counter. Basically, the runner counter will return back the value that you're looking at at any point in time. So say, for example, I wanted to look at the date. I can drag and drop the date down here to runner counter, hit the play button, and then you'll see the date appear in the top right here. So I can actually see it going and working its way through all the dates easily here, and it actually paused that right before the date that it brought, got to. Here, the event is January 20th, but it's showing the 19th, so it paused right before that, and then it moves on. You can also put something like the actual close amount. So maybe I want to see the stock market index and not so much a date. I can get rid of the date and bring in the close amount right here into the runner counter as well. And then if I were to hit play again, you would see that amount showing up in the top right. I think I'm going to leave it like that. I kind of like that view. Then the other thing you can do is underneath the format paintbrush, let's go ahead and fulfill this chart here. Under the format paintbrush, there's quite a few things you can change. You'll find underneath the series section here, for example, you can change the color of the line. So the line right now is this blue color, but you can certainly change that. You can also change the width of the line. So if I want to bump that a little, up a little bit to maybe three points, you can do that. And so that's what you can do in the series section. Under the gap section, you can see, notice that this is actually already turned off. Basically what the gaps is turned off means is that if there's any gaps in your dates, meaning that there are dates that there is no value for, it's going to close those gaps for you automatically and you wouldn't even know there's a gap in your dates based on it being turned off. If you want to see the gaps, however, you can turn on and you'll actually start to see gaps in your data here. You can see little gaps appearing in your line chart. And if you wanted to increase the visibility of those gaps, you can bump up the percentage and you can see the gaps much more visible in here as well. I kind of prefer to turn those off, but just nice to know that there's a feature built into this particular visual. You can also affect the pop-up. So the pop-up would be where the events occur. So whenever an event occurs, you can change the width and the height of the box that showed for us. You can also change the font size. So if it, say for example, I wanted to, let's animate this and go to our first event and pause it right there, or leave it right there. I could increase the font size of that some. Maybe I increase that to 13 point font instead, make it a little easier to read. You could even change the color if you wanted to. So if I wanted to, I can change the color of the uh, fill here, and maybe make it like a dark purple or something like that, so it's a little easier to see and it stands out a little bit more. So you have the ability to change some of those things in here. You can also change the fill color as well. That's the background color, but I think that works fine for what we're doing right now. So that pop-up settings section affects what those events look like whenever they occur. Underneath the dots, let's uh, go ahead and continue this out. Underneath the dots section, you can actually change the color of the dots. You can increase the size of the dots. This is probably something you would want to do. So maybe I increase the size of the dots to 15 points. Now they're much easier to read. 
And you can also adjust the minimum or maximum size of the dots. This would be more functional if you were actually leveraging the field we looked at earlier. Remember we saw there's an event size. If you were leveraging this, the event size field, then the dots minimum and maximum would be used in that case. You can also change the transparency of those dots. So if you wanted to make them more transparent or less transparent, you can adjust that with inside of this property section. All right, let's move on. Next, after the dots is the X and Y axis properties. If you expand these both, I'm gonna go ahead and expand them both here. Underneath the X axis properties, you might want to adjust the uh, color. For example, you can make them where they're much easier to read the X axis. So right now, by the way, the X axis is going through the center. If you don't like that it's going through the center, you can actually change the position of it to put it to the bottom. Now it looks more like a traditional chart here. You can also kind of make some adjustments in here if you wanted to, to the color. So maybe I wanted to make it more of a pure black. I can change that to a more pure black here, and that's a little bit easier to read now. Maybe you want to do the same thing to the y-axis. Under the y-axis, maybe I make it more of a pure black so it's a little easier to read again. That makes it much better there. All right, so you can see the major events are easier to see now. We don't have the x-axis going right through the middle of our screen. And we got a few more things here we can do. You'll also notice there's a playback section here. Under the playback section, you can actually have the play option automatically turned on. So we can auto turn on the play option. So once we hit play, or once we open this, it'll automatically play. You can also make it repeat. So if I turn on repeat and I hit the play button, it's going to automatically return. Once it gets to the end, it's going to return to the beginning and start all over. You can also control the playback speed if I wanted to. So maybe I make the playback speed here 15. So that'll speed it up quite a bit. And then I can also adjust the pause duration. So whenever it comes to an event, maybe I want it to only pause for five that will make it skip through these much faster. So it's going to pause for a few moments. Now that I lowered it, it should move on, and it's going to continue on quite fast. Now you can also change the button color. So the buttons you see in the top left here, if you don't like the colors of those, maybe you want to make them stand out a little more, you can make them more of a, maybe perhaps a red, and now they're much easier to read. And now because I've turned on the autoplay and the repeat options, you can see once it gets to the end, it's automatically going to start back to the beginning here. All right, so you have some flexibility on how you want that to appear. The last section here that we'll cover is the runner counter. And the runner counter is this, again, section in the top right that we are now, right now, showing what the, the total number is that we're measuring on this chart. So if I were to go into the playback, I'm sorry, the runner counter options here, you can see you can actually add a label to this. So say, for example, I wanted to put S and P, oop, let's do the right symbol there. S&P 500, you can do that. Let's take out some of the spaces there. So that way it's a little clearer what we're looking at here. I might even add something like a dash there. So now we know exactly what the measure is that we're looking at. You can also increase the size of this if you wanted to. So we can bump up the font size so it's really clear in what we're looking at. And maybe again, you'll make it more of a pure black so it's a lot easier to see the value that you're looking at. You can also change the position of this. If you wanted to move it to the left, you can tell you, say, I want to see it in the top left and then it shows up right next to the playback controls here. I kind of like it in the right, so I'm gonna leave it over there. All right, so a lot of extra settings in this one, a lot of things that you can play around with. Pretty neat little visual here. The last couple features that you see here are ones that you have in every single one of the visuals that are available to you. So I'm not gonna cover the title, the background, lock aspect, border in general, because you've seen those before in every Power BI visual you've ever touched. So that's really it for this one. Then I'm gonna go ahead and pause this. I hope you guys really enjoyed the Pulse chart here and look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module. Thanks a lot.